um and so i just wanted to come on here and i feel like this is the easiest way to like talk about it um you know i guess publicly or like with like a direct link or whatever with people who follow me um thank you all so much for the love on the paper magazine shoot but that's not what i'm here to talk about so um i like won't i'm just gonna kind of like jump right into it but um but yeah, so I just wanted to address something that I guess would be considered serious, but it's something that is um, something that I just feel like I need to like address just because like just moving forward in my career with my art. Um, it's something that I think needs to be, you know, talked about at least for by me. I feel like something that I should say um, and that is like nuance. <clears throat> um nuance in art and you know just like just lots of different stuff um so here's what I'm, I'm just gonna jump in I will say um in advance I am a rambler and I'm an over explainer and I go off on lots of different tangents so I'm so sorry thank you for listening I'm sorry if I go crazy or like if I go on some crazy rabbit trails or whatever but just you know bear with me so just for context, recently I put out my record. This is, you know, not self-promotional. This is just for context. I put out my record, Preacher's Daughter, which deals with themes of generational trauma and abuse and religion and, you know, like family dynamics and whatnot. Um, and this is something that I started when I was 18. I made it for myself. I had no followers, no listeners. I wasn't even making music. Um, and I was making something very much for myself. It was very much about my experiences and my, you know, just like my past and my family, my life, you know, my experiences I was having in the world. Um, and so it was very much central to my experience. It was, it was very much like my story, what I was feeling growing up and whatnot. Um, and so this album was very centric to that. But then over the course of working on this record, I've gotten older and my career has completely changed. I've gone from making music for myself, um, and, you know, making um music just for me to having more than you know a handful of people listening to it um and you know I've I've just been kind of thinking and you know I'm on the internet I like read comments I read posts I read dms and messages and things that people say and it's just got me thinking that like you know this record that I wrote about being a trans woman you know in the south that was very personal to me but you know as I've grown and started to kind of use this very Americana aesthetic um it's been something that you know I've kind of I don't know. I feel like there's a lot to be said about the Americana aesthetic that I wanted to address just because I feel like it would be kind of like negligent not to um, because I don't want to be dismissive of, you know, using these images. Um, you know, I I wanted to address the fact that I'm sorry, I'm, I know I'm rambling. I'm so sorry. Like, please forgive me. I'm like, these comments are distracting me. I'm trying not to look. Um, I wanted to talk about like accountability, I guess, and like mindfulness of um, like your persona. And, you know, I, I've been looking back at some of the things that I've posted and, you know, some photos and I don't know. I just, my... I don't want to move forward as an artist acting as though my art exists in a vacuum. I have been reading some old interviews of mine and I don't want to 
be negligent of other people's experiences because recently I did an interview, I think it was with Paper Magazine, and I think I've said it some other places, that I love the South. I have no problem living in the South, and I have been, you know, talking about my experiences here and how positive they've been, when in reality, I don't leave my house a lot and I spend a lot of time outside. And I don't really go around other people. <clears throat> and I don't want the fact that I am talking about how great it is to live in the South as a trans woman to be overlooked because I am also white. And I don't want to leave that factor out of the equation because I feel like this is a very important thing to talk about when you are doing the Americana aesthetic and you are using American flags and guns and such a polarizing backdrop for your artwork. I got into this, uh, not business, I didn't start to be a business, I started making art just to experience things. I mean, not to, to express my, you know, experiences and talk about life. But I feel like as you grow any kind of viewership and people are listening, you know, it doesn't exist in a vacuum. And I don't want to talk about my experiences and act like everything's hunky dory because, you know, it's, it's not like my art exists in a vacuum. We live in 2022. White nationalism is a huge thing right now. R systemic racism is a huge problem that it plagues pretty much every aspect of life as an American. And I don't want my art to come off as dismissive of that. And I don't want to sit here and make this art that is fictional and whatnot without expressing the fact that these are truths that, you know queer Americans face, black Americans face, queer black Americans face, there's intersections of classism and racism. It's like there's so many things that are true. And I just I've been feeling kind of like mm, about, you know, just it's it's I feel like there's a lot of things that you have to address if you're going to make polarizing art and critiques on America. Like, yeah, I talk about what it's like to be trans in America. But I'm still white and there's still experiences that may be overlooked by the artwork that I make. And I've just been kind of conscious of that recently. And I don't want to move forward being ignorant about it and ignoring these things and, you know, acting like, well, I've had a hard life as a trans woman in the South, so I can talk about it however I want because there's still there's deeper levels to it and there's deeper levels to the oppression that non-white American citizens face. And so, you know, I've, I've seen previous artists in the past use the Americana aesthetic and I've seen the comments that have been made towards them. And I just, I feel like this is an important thing that white artists in America, specifically white artists making commentary on America need to discuss and need to be open and address because I feel like it's just like I just feel like it's important I feel like it's important to not ignore the reality of some of these situations when you're going to make an art about certain things and I feel like it's just like it would be irresponsible not to because I am not unaware of the fact that I have of you know that my fan base is, you know, very white and Southern and people who grew up like me. And I don't want to be guilty of perpetuating American imagery that is polarizing and has a history of violence with, you know, um, you know, a viewership. I don't want people to come at me and be like, oh, it's okay to just run around and wave the American flag and wave some guns and like that's all fine and dandy. I, I don't want to come across as perpetuating that imagery um, because I feel like we live in a very polarizing time. It's 2022. Everything is so public and on the internet and you know we're, we're hearing experiences from people who previously probably didn't have as much of a voice before the internet and you know I think it's just important to be mindful of you know these things, you know, as an artist who's singing about America. Um, and I, 
I never want to make anyone feel unwelcomed or, you know, ignored or spoken over. Um, you know, I, I, I want to make art about my story and my experiences, but I don't want that to come at the expense of speaking over or ignoring or erasing other people's experiences. Um, because while I am queer, I am still white. And that is something that I think is necessary to be mindful of. And I just want to, to address that and tell people that because I feel like I haven't had, you know, I feel like I haven't spoken about it in a way that I could, that should have in, you know, detail on in the press regarding this album and the things that I've been saying recently. So I just wanted to come on here and say these things and kind of explain that, um, and kind of just, you know, try to be mindful of platform. Um, you know, with everything that's been going on in the world, also like with the Roe v. Wade thing that's been overturned and the state of, you know, things. Um, it's, I think what's really important right now is, you know, being mindful of uh, community is one thing I always love to talk about and, and, you know, leaning on your community and um, helping people when you can with what's available to you and biting off as much as you can chew and doing what you can with your resources. So um, yeah, I just wanted to come on here and say that. Um, so sorry for rambling. I, I know I, it's, I try to like, um, I've, I've, you know, been, I've just been kind of wanted to say these things, um, you know, for a minute since the records come out, I wanted to just kind of address, you know, some of the things I've been seeing, um, and, you know, kind of be mindful of this moving forward. Um, so I feel like this is the most direct line that I have with people on the internet, um, you know not through press, not through videos, not through lyrics, not through anything. I, um, I feel like this is the most direct way for me to just say my words uncensored and, um, and whatnot. And so this is, um, and yeah, so I just wanted to come on here and say that. Um, but yeah, is, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. Sorry for everybody who missed the beginning. I'm going to save this live so people can like watch it if they didn't catch the whole thing. Um, nothing happened. Nothing happened. I am just like, just like addressing some things. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to like speak directly to you guys about this. Um, I think moving forward in the future, um, you know, I think the next record will be a bit different. I think it's gonna be, um, I I think that it's, it's, I think it's going to be a bit, it's going to be a bit different. Um, and you know, keeping all this in mind, I am grateful for all of you for listening. Um, I, I just felt like I needed to say that. Um, thank you all for listening to, you know, for being here and tuning in. And, um, I'm glad I'm able to like chit chat with you guys. Um, I, would love to do this a bit more uh, later. I really want to kind of like, maybe like start, I don't know, something. Keep a cool, keep a cool link going. And you know, it's, it's nice to chat with all of you um, about this. So let me, uh, I'm trying to not miss any.
Um, I will answer all music questions at a later date. So I will, there will be other chats for that. But yeah, um, I am going to save this chat or this video. So, oh, sorry, I'm getting hiccups. Oh, um, for people to watch and read later. Um, thank you guys for listening. I wanted to just come on here and say that. So thank you for being here. Um, I'm glad I can have these direct chats with you guys. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any thoughts or needs anything or whatnot, DM me. I am on here all the time. Um, so yeah, looking forward to doing this again in the future. Um, I'm excited to see you all on tour. I can't wait to talk to you in person. Um, I, um, introspective stuff. Yeah, real quick before I go, does anybody have any, like, any questions? Um, because I don't want to come on here and just, like, talk my shit and then get off. Um. Not music-related questions. Um, does anybody have, okay, does anybody have any questions that are not related to music? This isn't really a music chat right now. Are you going to do something different with your aesthetic? Um... It's going to still be like Ethel Kane-ish, but it's, I think it's going to be different. I think I'm going to be less heavy-handed with the imagery. I don't think it's necessary. Um, especially moving on, you know, moving forward. Um, I don't have a strong Southern accent because I... Um, heavily rejected the south in high school and i literally forced myself to get rid to get rid of um my accent because i didn't want it anymore do i think the americana aesthetic is inherently problematic i think it's like kind of like i don't know it's a tough one because it's like a lot of people grew up here like in this country underneath this like strong wave of propaganda and so it's like some people it's like when you talk about it you kind of always have like a level of irony to discussing it and like incorporating it into your art but sometimes irony just comes off as like straight rehashing of it which i think is one thing that i've come to terms with in my own artwork um so Ethel Kane's not over I still have a lot of art to make about family and you know my anxieties and experiences um you know as a just as an individual um but I think the lens through which it'll be discussed will be a bit different it will very much still take place in the south you know in America because that's just where I'm from and that's where the story takes place because that's where I live and grow up. So that's where my experiences are at. But I think some of the more ham fisted imagery and backdrops of it, I just, I kind of would like to handle it differently. Oopsie. Um, hang on. I don't want to miss any comments. Um, thoughts on SCOTUS Roe v. Wade decision. I mean, it's just terrible. Like, it's just, uh, it's just terrible. Like, it's, I don't even know what else to say on it. Like, it's just the government working against the people. Like, it's, it's, it's really gross and I, I don't know. It's really scary. 
And I think it's going to open the door for a lot of other things where the government will try to take autonomy. Um, um, Are you dropping the American flag? Honestly, I think that would be the correct thing to do. I think that even, I think that even, you know, having it up or whatever as irony or to be ironic or whatnot, I feel like it's not. I just feel like it's, it's, it's over. It's past that. It's, it's irresponsible and it's like not, it's just not it, you know? Um, so I think moving forward, it, the, uh, I think moving forward, it's, it's, um, not going to be a part of the imagery anymore. So, um, so, I mean, moving forward, the aesthetic, moving forward, the aesthetic is very much going to be kind of, it's going to be different and it was always going to be different. I mean, this first record was kind of the introduction into everything. So it was like, it was big and it was like self-aggrandizing and it was like, American flags and guns and preachers and churches and it was kind of like like edgy eye catcher kind of things you know um to kind of like set the stage of psychotoxic America and whatnot but moving forward it's going to get into the interpersonal drama of these women and so it was, I mean, I didn't even have plans to make it. It's not going to be road trips and Budweiser and all that shit anyways. Like it was never going to be that. But I think now it will be not included with intention and not just because I didn't want it there in the first place. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's run its course. I think the sa the stage has been set and I think, you know, this, this image of toxic America is it's people get it I don't have to use that anymore and I don't think it's necessary moving forward um so yeah I um yeah the, the next two records will be very different it'll be a lot of like just like misogyny and those interpersonal family relationships and you know it'll, it'll be more personal it won't be some big like zoomed out portrait of America it's gonna be like a family drama, you know. Um, um, Do you think there's a way to use American Americana imagery against itself? Like using Americana aesthetics as a way to hold a mirror to the horrors of Southern American culture. I think so. I mean, I'm getting older and learning and my art is developing. So I'm sure I'll find a way to kind of portray it in a more meaningful light without having to do some like ham-fisted polarizing imagery that's eye-catching or whatever you know I think as I get older and I develop my art a bit more it'll be a bit easier to kind of say what I need to say without having to be like oh my god buzzwords and you know all that shit so I think that's um my mouth is like so fucking like so I'm salivating I'm hungry um, um, 
much, so I'm trying to like see on topic questions. Okay, does anybody else have any questions about what we were talking about earlier um, before I go? Oh, wait, there's questions in here. I'm sorry. Let me check these. Oh, those aren't on topic either. Um, where do we feel like we're focusing on organizing? Honestly, I would say I think organizing is... I mean, I will say for context, I have zero faith, faith in the government. I... I don't have faith in Republicans. I don't have faith in Democrats. I don't have faith in the government. I think the government is a one solid entity that is working against the people of this country, the lower class people. You know, they're, the capitalism is built off of draining people for money. Like, so I don't really have any faith in the government. So I think the organization is in between people it's in between people with platforms who are willing who who will share researched resources which you know you know and giving a voice to people who um you know are more educated and have things to say which is something i need to do something that anybody with the platform needs to do um and I think it's about like starting at home, like I said earlier, biting off what you can chew, like, like trying to unlearn all of this propaganda that has got communities warring against each other when there's obviously the common enemy being the government. Um, I think it's a lot of unlearning propaganda, a lot of unlearning, you know, things that instill you know hatred amongst communities and i i think it's about banding together with your neighbor and people who are in the same boat as you and realizing that we are not the common enemy we all you know come together i, th I think that's where it is i think it's, it's organizing in your community and and not you know, you, you can't fix something, some big grand scale problem if you can't even get along with like the people who live on your street or something. You know, it's it's like that. It's I think the organizing starts at home. It starts in your in your circle. Um, there's strength in numbers, strength in community, and I think that that is something that's gonna be very important. I think we can get change in this company in, in this company basically in this country but i think we have to realize the things that the government has done to keep us separated on purpose so we can have strength in numbers and get the change that we need and deserve um so that's that's how i feel about the situation and the government and everything that's going on. Um, I'm not super educated. I like, I, I don't really know a lot of, you know, um, intricate workings of how everything works. You know, I'm not super like, I don't know all the super fine details, but it's like, I, I think there's something, there's a part that we all play. Um, and Do you actively participate in any religion? No, I do not take a part in any organized religion. Christianity is a huge focal point of my art because that's how I was raised, but I do not participate in any active, like, religion, organized religion. I just, I, I just kind of avoid it. I think, I said something on Tumblr about this earlier today because someone asked me, but I just, 
I think all organized religion at some point devolves into some form of hierarchy, which leads to some people being oppressed inside of it because human nature will always take over in organized religion when you bring that kind of situation about. So I think it's just something that I like to avoid personally. A question box on your Instagram story. That's a good idea. Um, I guess I'm spiritual enough. Like, I don't know. I... Not, I, I don't like really like worship anything or pray to anything, but sometimes I like, I like feel, I feel like kind of something in the air when I'm out in the woods alone or something, you know, like something that may be bigger than me. I don't know. Those little magical moments, but I definitely wouldn't call myself religious. Okay, well, thank you all so much for listening. Um, I hope I didn't say anything too out of pocket. I just had that on my mind and I really wanted to, to talk about it. Um, I will save this video so people can watch who weren't here at the beginning or whatever. Um, I just wanted to get that off my chest and say that um, and kind of bring that up. Um, thank you for listening. If anyone has any um resources for this um roe v wade overturning mess that has just dropped on everyone's heads if anyone has any like you know reputable resources to send me that i can share um please do that you know something i i, I feel like like i said you know community is going to be everything and we're going to have to rely on each other in these situations and i think Resource sharing is good. Um, so yeah, send anything that you have my way so I can share it. I would be very appreciative of that. Um, and feel free to send me any more resources in the future. I'm here. I'm pretty much always on, pretty much always on Instagram. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening. Again, excited to connect with you guys. Um, while I'm on the road in a couple weeks, I can't wait to see you all in person and chat. Um, and I will do some story posting if you guys send me some stuff. So thank you so much. I really um, appreciate it. Um, and I am looking forward to talking to you guys next time. Thank you for listening. Love you all so much. Until next time. Bye.